Good morning, good morning. Dr. Gary here on the road. Today we're in Ranchos Palos Verde, California. And uh, we are dental brokers nationwide. We're filming live on location. So we're about to get into a new topic today. And um, just want to tell you about when it comes to contracts, there are certain standards you have got to follow because the bank's going to mandate it and so are the attorneys. So I'd say standard requirements in the average dental practice that you should follow. So we'll get into that in a minute. Anyway, as you know, we've been practicing now our dental practice brokerage for 12 years. And uh, we now have 10 employees. We are in 25 states and our newest state here is in California. We're very excited. Uh, we do work with some licensed real estate brokers here in the state of California. And um, in fact, yesterday we just saw a new practice in Beverly Hills, which was spectacular. But we've been doing this for 12 years now and uh, the 25th state is California. The information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes. It is not legal or business advice. We're available to you 365 days a year, 363 days a year, I forgot that. We take off Christmas and Easter. And uh, you can reach us uh, from 7.30 a.m. East Coast time to 7.30 p.m. East Coast time. So please give us a call. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. And our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. So if you need us, just contact us. Now, if you want to sell to a DSO in your larger practice, we know virtually everyone in the country. They pay our commission. And under certain circumstances, I can get your uh, legal fees reimbursed at closing. So uh, do give us a call. So let's get into today's uh, discussion. So we saw the uh, Beverly Hills office yesterday. Uh, unbelievable, doing about 1.3, 1.2 million. Spectacular views, penthouse. Oh. So we'll be talking about that. Um, and it should be posted on our website soon. We're getting more information about it. Love to share it with you. We actually have some pictures. We generally don't take pictures because, uh, you know, maintain confidentiality at all. And also some of the dentists sometimes become too judgmental. But we do have pictures of this one because I want you to see it. Anyway. Um, getting with contracts and what's standard, what's protocol, you've got to follow what is the standard protocol. If it comes to the, um, the bank requirements for a seller um, and things that the buyer has to follow, for example, the buyer has to be responsible for the records at least for seven years. He becomes a custodian of those records, so you've got to maintain them for seven years. That's very important. Secondly, issues like um, restrictive covenants. Standard government of restrictive covenants is 12 to 15 miles in the suburbs, maybe a five year. That's what the bank requires, that's what the buyer is going to require. Whatever buyer you have is going to want that restrictive covenant in there. You've got to have that. Okay, and you've got to have it's acceptable with the courts accept and so forth. You can't buck the system as a seller and say I want a very narrow uh, restrictive covenant because buyers get crazy over that and they get upset. They think you're going to steal the business. You can't do that. Uh, the next thing is work in progress. What do you do with the doctor has been doing his work before? Now you have the closing and he has all this unfinished work. There's formulas to finish that work out. Okay. Um, and the attorneys will have those formulas in there. The doctor can come back as an employee post-closing and he can finish up that work and get, uh, get paid as an employee. Our phones never stop ringing, you know. My buddies are calling me. <laughs> so, um, the doctor has to finish that work post-closing or you make an arrangement for the new buyer to finish it. But most new buyers don't want to finish that work. Um, so there's arrangements and there's formulas for that. But historically, sometimes you can let the seller finish up all the work. He pays the lab fee, he pays the staff, he does it on downtime. Or you treat him as an employee, you give him a certain percentage and you figure out a split with the crown seating, crown insertion, crown preparation, the same thing with the different procedures. You've got to have, it's standard what goes into a contract. So you don't want to try to buck the system too much because you want it your way. You always have to default to what is the bank that the buyer is funded. The buyer is funded by the bank. What are their normal requirements? And your attorney, if you have a dental attorney, will help you with all that. 
okay? Access to records. Access to records is a big deal, too. That seller needs access to your records that, you know, you're becoming the custodian. He needs it for seven years. Again, this is a requirement. Just go along with that. Don't try to buck the system on that. And your attorney, if he's a dental attorney, that's why we stress dental attorney, is very important. So, I'm sorry. Oh, that's my staff calling me. We never stop working, by the way. Uh, here it is, 363 days a year. It is my vacation day, but I'm um, working the phone and I'm uh, making the video for you. So, once again, greetings from California. Having a great time. Sort of fantastic practice in Beverly Hills. We'll share that with you soon. It's Dr. Gary on the road. Never a day off except Christmas and Easter, but having fun every day. Talk to you soon. Bye.